Hey everyone, uh, Edrum here, and uh, I just want to do another quick little somewhat ranty video about something that I see pop up a lot in Final Fantasy XIV, and that's talk about spaghetti code, right? I see it a lot. It's kind of done as a, as a way that the community is like, oh, they can't do this spaghetti code, this kind of thing now. And I kind of wanted to go in and explain a little bit about spaghetti code, because I think people without coding knowledge kind of don't understand it or they kind of think of it as an excuse for things and people also kind of think of it as like an ff14 spaghetti uh specific problem it's like it's not actually every code base in existence will have spaghetti code to some degree <laughs> some more than others this week i introduced some spaghetti code into my project for reasons and I kind of want to uh, explain like why that might happen and how that can affect development and also if that's affecting development in 14, right? So I kind of want to explain this and educate people so they have an understanding of what spaghetti code is. <laughs> but to start off with, I want to have a little example. And this is going to have nothing to do with coding, right? Because it's just easier to explain these concepts with something that people understand rather than talk about code. Let's imagine that you are an engineer. Coding is, is engineering to some people. Let's imagine you're an engineer and you've been tasked with building a bridge, right? You have a project. Uh, government or some kind of group wants to build a road bridge over a river. Okay? So, what do you do? In the beginning, you collect the requirements. You figure out, like, okay, how wide is the river? Uh, what's the soil like? How, how far do we have to, you know, uh, dig down the foundations of the bridge? How windy is it going to be? Because that'll affect how, we, how strong we need to build the bridge. All these things, and then you design... A cool bridge, right? Whoa. And it's great. You deliver it on time. It's strong, but also it's affordable. You've made everything all great. And if it ended there, that would be perfect. <laughs> but engineering projects, quite often, a bit like software projects, will have changed requirements. Sometimes this happens halfway through building it. Sometimes it'll happen down the line, right? So let's imagine that that same group comes back to you and they say, oh man, we love that bridge. It's so good. In fact, so many people are using it now that we want to add another lane. Can we make this a two lane bridge? And you're like, oh, okay. Um... Let's have a look at how to do that, right? So, okay, we built the foundations, assuming it would support one lane either way. How, how much work is it to upgrade those foundations to get it to support heavier weights, right? How, how, well, can we, how well can we retrofit these things in? Um, and you have to do a lot of work, and <laughs> it's still cheaper then destroying the bridge and building a new one, right? But you're doing a lot of weird things now and your design doesn't quite make sense. It works, but it's not optimal. If you were going to build a two lane bridge from the beginning, you would design it differently to how you've done it, essentially. And then developers come back like a few years later and like, oh man, we love this, we love this. Hey, can we get a bike path? <laughs> and you're like, okay, maybe that's, hey, that's not too much work. So let's build a little, little bike path on either side. Cool. We'll do that. That's not too much work. We don't actually have to change anything with the foundations, but we do have to widen the whole thing. Like, okay, we do have to now take more consideration like the wind because the bridge is getting wider and so on. Right? And then this continues and continues, and eventually you end up with a mess that is technically working. Everything works. It's a bridge. It works. People can use it. <laughs> However, to upgrade it further in the future, 
is going to start to become either incredibly costly, incredibly uh, time consuming, or just straight up impossible. And at that point you go, all right, well, we just need to destroy the bridge. <laughs> we just need to destroy it and build a new one. And then you got the problem, this is specific to engineering of, but people want to be able to use the bridge. <laughs> So we have to build a new bridge somewhere else and then bring it in. And this is a bridge example of spaghetti code, right? Was it wrong for the engineer to design it only to support uh, two lanes in the beginning? No, no, that was sensible and it made it uh, cost efficient and time efficient to build. Was it wrong for the clients to be like, yo, we only want one lane in the beginning and then change it down the line it's like no also not their fault because requirements do change naturally over time they couldn't expect that the bridge would be so busy over the years but you still have this horrible mess of a bridge <laughs> and this is the same thing with spaghetti code right of you can have a reasonable well thought out system in the beginning but with 14 and just generally speaking any live service or project that gets updated over time and new features get added you start to accumulate this spaghetti code right you start to accumulate this code that was originally designed just to do this but has been kind of retrofitted to do a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and then you get into kind of like breaking point and also, the problem with FF14 is people don't like the idea of stuff not happening, right? The fix to spaghetti code is to not make any meaningful progress for a long time, right? The, the fix is to just tear down the code, refactor it, rebuild it, but none of that adds new features to the game. None of that. That is just time spent purely on actually improving the code quality, and players are like, why aren't they fixing the game? Why aren't they improving the game? It's like, because it can take months of refactoring before you're actually ready to add new features again. Right? But I also think that people blame Spaghetti Code a little bit too much on 14. I, I think this is one of those things where it's like, it's a Yoshi P quote from the past, and it's kind of like, it's become a community thing to constantly refer to as Spaghetti Code. It's like, no, it's not necessarily spaghetti code adding new features to any project <laughs> is a pain right uh any project is going to require some kind of refactoring or cleanup at some point in time so many people have this idea like oh you can just add a new feature like no how does that integrate with all the existing stuff how do we make this work D does our code base already have the foundations to support that no well because we didn't think we were going to need that in the first place. So that's why I'm saying <laughs> some things in FF14 are going to take a lot more effort than people assume, but that's not necessarily going to be because of spaghetti code. That's just programming in general. That's just engineering in general. So, uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to explain that using this example of terms. Uh, Sometimes, sometimes stuff just takes time. <laughs> there's, there's a really good uh, old, old quote as well, talking about like, oh, the manpower, they need to hire more people, right? Um, there's a thing called Brooks Law, which kind of talks about how, oh, you know, uh, hiring more people can make a project take longer sometimes. <laughs> because you need, to, you need to train those people up, and while you're training them, uh, you're actually taking resources away from the existing staff. Like if I had to hire someone right now to help me work on my website, I would need to spend a lot of my time training them and helping them and getting them set up with how my website works and all that stuff. And during that time, they're not contributing that high of quality code. I'm committing less code because I'm helping them. And they may even be setting things back because they are introducing bugs to the system that then I have to fix. That's part of Brooks Law, where it's like, s sometimes adding more workers, they've, they've got to ramp up time, essentially, before they become productive. And that can be like six months, right? That can be a year before a software engineer is 
probably productive depending on the kind of project. And then you've also got the other part of Brooks Law, which I really like to mention a whole bunch of times, because so many people were like, just throw money at the problem, right? Um, and that's, uh, it's the quote, uh, nine women can't make your baby in a month, right? Sometimes you, you can't just throw more people at a problem and solve it faster. Sometimes things just take time. So, anyway, yeah. Short little rant video. Wanted to get some, I wanted to air my mind on spaghetti code. Uh, yeah. Alright, see ya!